afternoon, Trinidad. Good afternoon, Trinidad to Bego. Good afternoon to everybody who is locked onto the street now on 9 FM today. It's Monday. You know, Monday the 8th of April 2024. 1231. And I have a guest in studio with me from the Ministry of Gender and Child Affairs. Gender and Child Affairs. And she's here today to talk about uh, child abuse awareness. Um, I I am excited about this because, you know, I, I always have concerns that, you, you you know, when you hear about children and, and they being abused and what is being put in place to try and resolve or deal with this issue. So today, I wanted to introduce herself and when she introduced herself, she's going to tell you about the video that you just saw. It's a TikTok video. Um, it's a challenge. And she's yes. gonna, so she's going to give you all the information about it. Let's pull it back a little closer to you. Certainly. Good afternoon, everyone, Trinidad and Tobago. I am Uma Bailey, the coordinator of the Child Affairs Division, Gender and Child Affairs, in the Office of the Prime Minister. And I am happy to be here today because uh, it is April, and April is global, globally celebrated as the month of child abuse awareness and prevention. And so what happens... Um, from since 1974 is that during this period there is amplified messages within the communities within media within government agencies it's we are amplifying all efforts to support you know um, the prevention of child abuse because child abuse can be prevented so um, the video that you've just seen is a video created by uh, UNICEF as we are uh, parties to signing on on the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Child it is our obligation to do things that support their initiatives and this initiative is one of the ways that we are you know spreading the message about child abuse and oftentimes when we hear about family violence we don't see how it impacts a child and we don't see the connection that it has to child abuse and so this challenge that we are challenging persons during this time is for them to play their part you know get involved in these challenge let let tnt know that you are standing up that you are being a part of the prevention methods okay so then you will have you have been seeing that you have said you know, said those, said, said, you know, those um, awareness, making the awareness more and more. Then you have a lot of plans in place for this, um, for, for this, this, this. Uh Certainly, this month is packed with activities. Um, we just launched the Indono series with, um, uh, which happened in the Kamuto Manzanilla area and that is all about um, it's a 10 week program in teaching the community about child abuse what it is how to identify it how to um, get help um, so that will be occurring during the month of April we also have um, caravans within our communities okay. we are going to be working with the communities to have children to speak up to own their voice especially given that they need to know what is abuse they need to know what their rights are as well as their responsibilities because we don't teach rights without teaching your responsibility for those rights right. and helping children to be agents in their own protection as well um, we will have some you know high stakes stakeholders um key stakeholders engagement where we are sitting and discussing what are the protection measures that we are putting in place how are we collaborating as a government as ngos as um civil service personnel how are we collaborating to ensure that children are safe we will also have um an ict panel discussion and that's where we are engaging children because another part of abuse is you know neglect and right now in the technological era oftentimes as parents we just 
you know allow children to use these devices and it is it is becoming challenging to monitor their activity and so we want to bring children to that awareness that you can actually get yourself at a risk of being abused um, utilizing technology so that is going to be happening this month we're also looking at the mental health and well-being of children during this time as well um, looking at their areas and, and t- periods in which you know child abuse can heighten uh, we're looking at exam times when you know it's stressful for both mommy and child and we're looking to build that resilience resilience and self-regulation for both parents as well as children so all of those things are coming up okay well that's really good to know that you all have have really plans good plans to educate and inform persons from different communities about child abuse what is child abuse well child abuse in its simplest explanation is any act that results in a harm or injury to a child right um in its more complex definition we would look at you know the physical abuse right physical abuse is where you are using force in any form to hurt a child and it may not be deliberate you know you may be using it as a measure of you know discipline or what so have you mm. but it results in harm mm. and it results in injury that is abuse right. um you have sexual abuse where it's sexual intercourse or you know touching of a child as an adult or person in care of that child um even adolescents you know there's an age barrier you know and and that child is unable to give consent right then that is child sexual abuse and then you have emotional abuse where you're overly criticizing a child bringing that child down tearing down their self-worth you know that is emotional abuse as well there are other types which is neglect right um you can neglect a child's nutrition you can neglect a child's education you can neglect a child's um you know dental care these are things that are important for children's growth and development and once you neglect to get those things for the child or to put it in place you are abusing that child how do you how do you detect when a child is being abused, because as you were saying, how well, you know, you were drawing some examples. So you talk about sexual abuse, you talk about emotional abuse. You talk, well, let's say um, a neighbor or a family member were to look at a child. How will, how can they detect if that child is being abused? It's so important for us to pay close attention to children. Um, for smaller children, there are some signs. You look at it when they're playing together, you know, are they eliciting more sexual behaviors in their play? You know, um, are they becoming more anxious uh, around persons for unwarranted reasons you know persons that they may have been okay with they're no longer okay being in that person's presence or this they start to wet their bed all of a sudden you know they're regressing in their development and the things that they ordinarily would have done like get up and go to the party or so they're not doing or looking for telltale signs on the child's body if you are seeing blemishes or marks on the child's bodies that you can't account for those are some signs that you can look at to determine that that child may be abused okay well that is interesting huh? because you know there are some people who see all those things and still think that it may just be um fear to go to use the 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 the, 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 the the washroom in the night because some children are very my son is 13 years and he's still pretty dark uh-huh. so you know, and that's you just have to leave one the corridor light in order for him to feel comfortable to leave his room to go to use the washroom. So, you know, and and, and I understand what you're saying because there are some things that are clear cut that yeah. you would you could observe and notice and recognize something isn't right here. Yes. You have to be, you know, constantly observing your child because the slightest change in behavior can alert to something. That does not mean that every change in behavior would alert to them being abused. Mm -hmm. But certainly it informs you that, you know, something is happening and you can talk to that child to get to the source of what that is. Wow. I, I, it's interesting because I remember just recently there was a whole incident of a mother 
you know, being concerned or putting herself um, in the know, in the sense of she is checking because you know she she not that she feel he was being abused or or you know what she was checking and some people in 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 the in the community or you know were very upset. Mm-hmm. But you were saying that you know as a parent you need to be very observant. That's right. And 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 ensure that if a child is being sexually abused, especially sexually abused, how do you deal with matters? like that as a as a unit how do you all go about well for the child the child affairs our our continued effort is through advocacy um we are working along with partners throughout the government agencies as well as the um non-profit organizations sharing that message on what is child abuse because the important thing for us as a public to know is what are the signs because once you know what are the signs of child abuse and how you can treat with it then we can bring um an end to what this this is almost like an epidemic right, yes right. we can bring an end to it so from the child affairs division we go uh, do a lot of um trainings on child abuse and child abuse awareness and child abuse prevention we work along with our um, partnering ministries to support work that has been done within communities as well as we continue to um you know work with children in the schools uh to know their rights because Understanding your rights and promoting your rights, respecting your rights, leads to child uh, protection as well. So what are some of the tips you will give to parents or guardians or neighbors to prevent child abuse? Um, so the most important is for you to know what the signs are. Because if you don't know, it could be happening right in front of you. So know what the signs are, and that's why we continue to advocate through our communities. The other thing is, if it is a child says to you something has happened, it is natural for you to feel you know, some level of intense emotion, whether it be um, anxiety, whether it be anger. You as a parent will feel that intense emotion, but it's important to stay calm right. and to listen to that child. You know, let that child know that I am hearing what you're saying. Don't prompt the child to, you know, give you, well, this is what they do or that is what they do. No, you allow that child to say it in their own words. And as that child expresses themselves and lets you know, you want to let them know, I believe what you're saying. I trust what you're saying. And it's great that you came to me and shared that that information. Thank you. And then you tell the child, you know what? This is what I am going to do. I'm going to make a report. And as well as what are the next steps so that child feels comfortable. Okay. But, you know... So let's say I have all this information that you just shared there. Mm-hmm. All that information, the child feels comfortable to say to me, Daddy, Auntie interfered with me. Or Daddy, the neighbor across the road touched me. Mm-hmm. Or Daddy, a boy in school constantly does certain things to me in the washroom. and Or a teacher. Mm-hmm. Right? I have that information. I have Click. Let's say the child goes as far as to tape the 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 the, the incident. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. to have it recorded, and I hear it. I know that it's happening for a fact now because it's it's there. It's there. <laughs> yes, and I and I prefer now to keep the information to myself, not do anything about it. Say well. Sometimes in life, let me tell. I'm telling you how people mm-hmm. put things across. Eh? Yeah. There are some people who are of the mindset that, well, in life you go through things, and um, it's a life lesson. Mm. Not to trust anybody and Good just price. be careful. And but but let's you know, you're you, you not going as fast to know carry the information as you rightfully say to the authorities yeah. to deal with it yeah. what can be done what, is there anything that can happen to me 
for withholding information? Certainly. So it is our moral responsibility to make a report. From the time you know that a child is in danger, it is your moral responsibility to make a report because our child needs help, right? And I, I always like the saying that Einstein says, the evil in the world is not so much because of evil persons only. It is because of people who know and not doing anything about it, right? And so your responsibility is to do something about it. And what you can do, what is in your power to do is to make a report, right? And for the sexual um, assault or sexual abuse, it is actually uh, an offense if you do not make the report. Because once you uh, have knowledge of a sexual uh, abuse case, or, and you have not reported that you are likely to be uh, fined 15,000 or jailed for, uh, I think it's about seven years, but I, I, I may be, um, I'm serious? not sitting there. Yeah. It, it, okay. No, I'm just going to give you a, a, an example, right? Of something that I experienced already, where um, if you go to the hospital mm -hmm. as a teenager, yeah, you go to the hospital with belly cramps. No, I'm not talking about the children. I'm talking about outside of Trinidad. If you go to a hospital outside of Trinidad and Tobago yes. with belly cramp as a young little girl, uh -huh. and the nurse does a urine test on you, does all the urine tests, uh -huh. and the last urine test we, they do is a pregnancy test. Yeah. Anytime it shows up that the child is pregnant, if the nurse ignores it, that nurse could get locked up. Certainly. Certainly. Um, I think as well as in, in Trinidad, it is important for us to understand that when a child is in your care, you have duty of care. And so once you are aware, once you are aware that this child is a minor and may have been the victim of abuse, it is your duty to make that report. And so you are going against all of the, the various principles of your um, profession if you do not make that report. And you can likely be fined or pre uh, in prison. Wow. Where does one go? Where does one go? A child or an adult or family members or persons go to seek help or information or... or when, when you find out that a child is being abused? For us at the Child Affairs, uh, Gender and Child Affairs, what we do is share this acronym, ACT FAST, using the word FAST as a way to remember how you can get support. So F, the family services, our national family services, you can contact them and get that level of support for your um, family, your member, the member of the family. Also, A, the authorities, we have numbers such as 999-996-800-4321. You have all of those numbers that are available to you. So contact the authorities. At school, you have your social worker. You have your school guidance counselor, or teachers, persons that you trust that you can share that information with. And they will take you through the various process as well as you have 24 hour hotlines, our child line, right, where you can call and get that level of support. So we say act fast, call family, national family services, the authorities, school, as well as the telephone hotlines. Okay. Um, I want to take some calls from the listening public and let's hear from them. Or oh, they may have a question for you that I may have left out. Um, but I, I, I want to hear what are their thoughts about, you know, this is the Children Abuse Awareness um, Month. Child Abuse Prevention Month. Because beyond being aware, we want to prevent it. All right, let's take some calls. Okay. Hello, good morning, caller. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, afternoon. Afternoon, Pastor Google. Afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Listeners and callers. Um, Ma'am, I'm hearing about a recent case about a child in Tobago who got left back in England. Is that, uh, or can that be considered as child abuse? I'm waiting to answer. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you very much. Interesting question. Very interesting question. The specifics of the case, I will not know. It's and so, while is the child is a old? minor, yeah, while yeah. the child is a minor, mm. we don't have specific. I don't have enough information mm. to say that that the child was abused. If the child is left in the care of whomever, I can't mm. say. But I can certainly say that child neglect um, looks at that physical protection of it. If you are neglecting right. that physical protection of mm -hmm. the child, we are also looking at if you are not, um, you are the person in care of that child and you mm -hmm. have left that child without the ability to to support yeah, or yeah. to receive support, yeah. that, that certainly is neglect. But for that case, I mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to say if it's abuse, I don't have enough detail. <laughs> it, because I, I, and I know the case that the caller is talking about is a, is a case where some, some you, um, people went to England on a football clinic, one of the one of the, the 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 children took that child's passport and boarding pass and came to train out with it, and the team left him in in, in England well, without any parents, without anybody. Right, and I would say that. Um the authorities will have to investigate that mm -hmm. and from there the determination on whether or not it is um child abuse, child abuse or, child neglect. Be, or, or child neglect would be um determined then yeah. for now i can say it's certainly an unfortunate situation yeah. and i am i'm disheartened to know that a child would be left in a, a foreign country, foreign country. without any support yeah. Yeah. um it will beg to you know question the authorities uh um the persons who are in authority yeah. that are going with our children yeah. and that's so it's critical for you as a parent to ensure that you know when you are sending your child on any field trip anywhere that they go that they have that level of support um that they can count on wow so we're taking your calls um you know that that call i brought up that's that incident there and that incident is so relevant and real right now hello good morning good afternoon yeah man good afternoon pastor Buru. good afternoon um the lady there i don't get the name of it yeah all right good afternoon good afternoon to the Atlanta tobago president in the Atlanta tobago villager now we have a subject there and I don't look back at certain things that like legislation put in the society for child abuse and um I look back at when we move it from our early age to 18 years. And um, something worrying me in this life. You don't really wait until they're old to make a child. And most of children, because of the inquisitiveness, they may make a child young. And inquisitiveness in sexual or relationship on the whole, it starts long before 18 years. Now, my question and what I'm observing, the penalty but a child being 16 years with a child 16 years or even so just about before you could reach 20 21 that we say 19 18 with a child 16 years that is a problem where i don't know how society look at it you can't you have frustrated children very much out here because they're the initiative mind they want to make the thing and being stubborn by elders of the society law that bring a lot of frustration children in all their homes or the children in them sometimes eventually get totally disrespect because they can't get to do what they want or they need to do in what they experience and showing them and we as friendly people as parents have to very alert with that because their children going away from them because they what they were they defeat in that consciousness that or that yeah that consciousness what they put on parents to govern children with it's a very thing parents are not having problems because parents people can really talk uh, against the children parents that what i just said they all you look at it well and realize that all the children moving away from all you all you thank you all right, right. Fellow with, all um, right right all right those a lot and i tell i hope that i really say something that all you could up to all right, right. thank you this other good, afternoon. good afternoon good afternoon good afternoon good right. afternoon pastor google good afternoon. and good afternoon to your guests good afternoon hello yes Hi. go ahead um 
Yes, I want to ask your guess. If this is this child abuse, there's a young girl outside of True Value in Diamond Vale, Diego Martin, on Garnet Road with a little baby, a little, the child probably is a year old, in a stroller, in the blazing sun. It's three months now. People have been calling the child authority, the CPU, that young lady is out there in this i drive in my car when i have to come out to face that heat and i can't understand how that young girl i don't have a problem here begging but you're bringing your little child in a stroller so i would like you all to investigate that thank you well i can certainly say that um it is a, a matter for the children's authority to look at um i am not i don't have um any information on the on that specific case but it is a matter for the children's authority to look at and you should make that report we recognize that you know there are a lot of um challenges with persons peddling on the street um, as they say everybody has to eat a bread in trinidad that's our colloquial way of, of looking at it but certainly we have to look at the protection of our children and a child who is um a baby and you know deserve that level of of you know more security than anything else at that age we would want to look into it very seriously wow let's take this call have a good afternoon Hello, good afternoon. Caller. Let's start. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Pastor. And good afternoon to the lady here. Let me get her name. Pastor Google, if I'm not mistaken, the child that stayed back in England, I think that um, a, pol a police woman who went with them too, she stayed back with the child. The child is not alone. A police woman is here in, in, in England with a child. Yes. Okay. Child not alone. Hold it on the news. And then we cannot get the child home. All right. Okay. Yes, we, I hold we... it on the news on another so you can see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Any closing remarks? I know that... Um, if if persons want to um if person wants to get in contact with you all considering i'm seeing a lot of calls coming in let me just see if i can clear up the lines and then you just hello good afternoon good afternoon pastor google and to you again yeah holy two woman stay back with each other but that's not my question that's just tickling my memory um to, to your guest here Let's say, you know, there are different religious groups that ha can marry um, children, teenage children, under age, under 18. Now, if someone should give consent, like a parent or parents can give consent to that individual to marry the child, can that person have sexual intercourse with that child under age child? I'm listening. All right. <laughs> Let's just take this last call before we go. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Pastor Google. And good afternoon to the young lady over there from the Child Protection Unit. Good afternoon. Let me say first, um, program like this, I will give 10 out of 10. Um, Ma'am, can you give the general public the statistic um, how many children have been abused, um, let me say from 2020 to 2023? Because I have been listening to news and the, the statistic that children in this country have been rape, use, and bug, especially little boys and them too. It is alarming in my view. It is really, really alarming and something must stop. Can you um, reveal the statistics to the listeners, please? Thank you. No, we have the time going on. So, yes. you know how quick you could do so that. let's see how quickly. Um, I would say that the marriage act of um, Trinidad and Tobago as it relates to child marriages, it is available on um, online, on, online mm -hmm. and you would see where uh, a child can have intercourse with their married partner, and it's not an offense. There's an age um, racket that that should happen for, so I would say to look at that 
um, document and be guided accordingly. As it relates to the statistics, the average from the Children's Authority is just about a 1,300 and something reports of abuse every year. Um, so it is an alarming because one is too much and so we continue to advocate that all of us have a part to play in bringing child abuse to zero and so i encourage each one of us in trinidad and tobago to play our part get involved in the tiktok challenge show that you are you know standing up against family violence against child abuse against any form of harm towards children thank you very much for being with us today we appreciate it thank you for having me a very interesting interview because we are going from the time of traditional bullying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to now where bullying is done via the internet yeah right and i would like to say good afternoon to you miss Pad good Padilla. Afternoon. good afternoon how are you today i'm good tell us what is cyber bullying well, cyberbullying in its entirety involves the use of digital technologies to harass, to cause embarrassment, to cause harm, to threaten individuals overall on using the internet. Okay. So any device that I have, um, maybe a tablet or mm -hmm. um, or my phone, I can yes. take my phone and... Yes. Any device that grants access to the internet. To the internet. Yeah can be used as a device for cyberbullying. And and tell me what's the difference, you know, between cyberbullying and traditional bullying? Well, the difference in cyberbullying and traditional bullying, traditional bullying is normally face to face. Right. Where persons would attack you, insult you, embarrass you, do different things, harm against you. With cyberbullying now, it's access to you 24-7 with the use of internet. Internet. Yeah. So while it is, it may be one person, a group of persons, maybe even classrooms within schools. Mm -hmm. Now it can take place on a very large scale, national, even internationally, it can take place. So this, this means that that type of bullying is, is, is a more damaging type oh, of bullying? Yes. Because mm -hmm. you, it, it, with the traditional bullying, you could only... Um, bully that person when you see them. Yes. But cyberbullying is like at any point. It's at any point and with cyberbullying you can now do it anonymously. Yeah. Where we have the access yes. to creating profile, fake profiles right. online, mm -hmm. where we can buy random SIM cards, create different profiles, and we can stalk, harass, and embarrass persons that can lead to a whole line of um, trauma that a person can endure. You can t tell me some of the effects of um, cyberbullying on a victim. Huh? Um, other than feeling shame, mm -hmm. feeling abandonment, we have many cases where we can draw from both internationally and regionally where cyberbullying has led to suicide yeah yeah we have a person has developed eating disorders where a person now in isolation where they are withdrawn and uh, we have the attacks of anxiety and depression and that in itself leads to not other streams of trauma person may endure all right for the for the younger um community how could cyberbullying be done, like, in school? Yes, cyberbullying could be done in school. Again, once you have access to a device right. that has internet, whether you're in school, whether you're home, whether you're on the street, wherever you may be, you can still bully someone over social media, over internet, any platform you choose to. But how can, how can that be prevented in the schools? Well, it can be prevented in the school by educating students about 
um, cyberbullying, right. how it affects a person, the things you can do to safeguard and prevent yourself. Um, we also encourage students, children to report. They may be hesitant to report the bullying mm -hmm. because, you know, we have the thing that we have no proof. Yes. We don't know if it's if it's, if it's really you. really that person. Yeah. Right. So we encourage persons to come out, speak, make a report. Be an, let us but know. Can somebody be detected? Well, um, if if they do like fake profiles and stuff like persons that. Persons can be detected. Thankfully, we have the cyber crime unit yeah. in China and Tobago uh -huh. that is very effective in what they do. So while I may be limited in my capabilities, we have trained professionals that can lend assistance and lead to the alleviation of this. All right. And, and what's the steps? If, if, if my child is being cyber bullied, mm -hmm. what's the steps that my child could take to, you know, to help? What, what, what can they do, you know? I mean, this is something that you don't even know who the person mm -hmm. is or, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know where to start because this person, every time you, let's say you go up on your Facebook page yes. and they see you live because they can see the green icon yes. that's your live. Yes, yes, right? yes. Yeah. They can see you live now, so hear what? Now is the time I can attack you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? What are some of the things they can do to, you know, to... Well, for children that are victims of cyberbullying, there is a rule that we have act fast. Right. The acronym is F Family, where you can contact the National Family Services, talk to a trusted family, a person of trust. A, we have the authority, which is the police service. This is a number that many people still don't know, but it's 999. Right. You contact the police service, the victim and witness support unit, let them know what's going on. Um, we have the children authority, which is 996, and we have the child Mm, protection unit. There's also the S for student support services. Now the student, student support service don't get the proper in which they should. Right. Yeah, the service is there that gives guidance and counseling to school social workers, teachers and principals. We also have telephone, which is a T, which is a trusted call. That's Chiline. Chiline is a free um, service in which a person can call and they will get access to someone on the line in mm -hmm. which they can speak. They can give information both anonymously and leave their name and information for further intervention. No, I'm, I am I'm, I, I, I'm from on the ground, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, most people may say, you know, you call the station and tell somebody that you've been cyberbullied. Yes. They might be like, what madness is this? You mm -hmm. know, why they call in the station and wasting the police mm -hmm. time? You know, this kind of way. Yes. The, 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 the concern of something like that is, I should say, futuristic. Mm. It's not, it may be happening a lot. Yes. But it's not to the front line for the police that will answer a phone mm -hmm. in the station. Yes. You know, so if you could say, that, okay, I'm going to call 999 mm -hmm. and the police answers. And they say, well, um, yes, um, you have a report, and you was like, yes, I think my daughter or son is being cyber bullied. Mm -hmm. Is the police service, I know you're not a police, yeah. but is the police service heading in that direction as well? Yes. You know, to handle calls like this in a very professional manner. I would say yes. You would say yes. I would say yes. Um, there, especially if you call and ask for the victim and witness support unit. Right. There are targeted, trained professionals that deal especially with persons, no matter what the problem or the issue. Once you're right. a victim, they, they, they have the interventions needed to push forward. So you can make the phone call. You mm -hmm. can walk into the station as well. Besides doing that, is mm -hmm. there anything else a teacher or a parent can do, you know, well, when we it comes to protecting the child from, from something like this? We as trained professionals, as adults, adults should listen without judgment. It's right. easy for us to put our own perspectives on stuff. But we as adults, we need to listen without judgment. We also need to reassure the child that it is not their fault. Don't blame them. Don't look 
for a reason to blame them. Well, right. what you do then to cause yeah, this, to you know? Right, understood. Don't, understood. We need to work together to also find a solution. Don't just hear the issue and the problem. We need to find a, a solution. solution yes. And sometimes it's it's very easy to find a solution with the child. What do you think that we can do now to lessen this? Right. If we know that every time this happens, when you do this, what can we do to lessen this? And why are we lessening this? We're seeking the intervention in which we can, um, what we can do to help the child. Right. There's also call for monitoring. We live in this era, era since COVID-19. Everybody has a tablet or a phone yeah. in front of them. Yeah. Parents need to learn to monitor when their child is on it's online. Yes. Parents yes. and guardians. Link, the, link your device. Yes. Link your device, your mm -hmm. personal device to your child's I device. I am telling you, link yes. it. Because there are apps that are so secretive. It looks like a calculator. It looks like a little phone book. But these apps are there to monitor. It gives persons access to whoever owns the device. Right. You understand? So we have to monitor. There are parental guidance for a lot of these different apps. Use your parental guidance. Don't leave it up to, yeah, I trust my child. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But you need to understand there's always somebody there's on the other side. Yes, yes, there's always yes. somebody. And encourage your children, your loved ones, to communicate with you. Make you be the person of trust. Of trust that yeah. safe space where they can come without judgment and they will communicate with you. That is that you, you said a lot there, mm -hmm. and I hope a lot of the parents are listening. I would have asked uh, some of the names of these apps, but I know you would not have that. Old no, time, yes, yes, right. And it will be nice in a in a further interview mm -hmm. if you can research and have some of these apps because a lot of parents don't like to research on their own. Well, as you say that, yes. allow me to interject here. Right. Um. Well, the Gen Non Child Affairs Division, as you know, we're in Child Abuse Prevention Month, right. and we are doing a lot of different initiatives where it's called the ICT, you know, and what we are doing right now on the 16th of April, right. we have some children targeted from standards 4 to 5, as well as forms 1 to 3, where we'll be having a panel of discussion concerning these different cyberbullying, online grooming, how parents and guardians and professionals need to be more aware. So in these different forums, we plan on bringing this information f more forward. I like what you, where you went, mm -hmm. right? I would like you to elaborate a little more because this is the month of? Child abuse prevention. Child abuse yeah. prevention. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about... Um, Cyberbullying, no, right? It's not just about cyberbullying. Right. So you will it's have a, having a convention when? We are on the 16th of April right. in the atrium of the office of the Prime Minister. Right. That's in Sinclair. So, you know, you all could come on and as the media, as media personnel and gather right. information as well. Yes. We plan to collaborate with the Cyber Crimes Unit of Trinidad and Tobago in the TTPS Division. Right. Also, Children's Authority. Um... We're speaking about the mental health aspect of the children as well, how they are affected when it comes to the devices and the exposure to online bullying, to grooming, things that parents need to look at. So we plan on having a real nice, engaging panel discussion mm -hmm. where persons that will be present can interact. I am so interested <laughs> in that um, symposium, I should say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And one of the things that is very important is child grooming for me. Yes. You know, yes. I know that's not the topic today. But so it's, we're part gonna, it's part yes. of it. It's part so, of it. So, and that is very important for parents. Yes. You know, and for the public to get a little more knowledge mm -hmm. on things like that because even with the um, pictures your children post on their social media, yes. right, we have them looking kind of are a little older yes. than their age, mm -hmm. you know, and then these sicko guys that they have out there, right, is getting into their mm -hmm. um, messages or inbox or whatever. Yes. They're getting onto them, and then they start to make your child yeah. an adult yes. mentally. Yes. You yeah. know? And that is one of the things I would, I, 
I would like to speak on, but we're speaking. Well, we can today. speak. We can speak you know? in general. Yes. What we have is we have a lot of children we will see displaying. Now I don't have the data to support this presently, but uh -huh. I know that there is data out there where we have children because they're so exposed and saturated with online devices and yes. presence. Yes. We have a lot of adults, both male and female, start to see that are now interacting with these children. You know, using the same jargon and all of. And talking and presenting themselves as younger. As yes. Yeah? Yes. And then we have yeah. all of a sudden, you see, especially when you have children post up status. It's something I talk to my daughter and nieces about. You see, on the status, oh, I'm feeling so tired today. I'm just frustrated and depressed. And, and then we have. That, yes, yeah, these locals. That's right. Yes. So mm. you have to be very guarded in how you expose yourself. I tell children that I interacted, don't give no one a lie to invade your space. Yeah. Be very careful. Now it's very sad that we have to teach our children to be guarded at, about all these about, things yeah. from so young. But the reality is but they need to know. Exactly. And you see, everything moved from being so, I would say, so easy to so difficult yes. in, in the space of no time. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a child um, in the 90s, which is a young adult mm -hmm. now. When you grow in that child in the 90s, you give them the basic knowledge. Yeah. And if you're speaking to them about sex, you speak to them about sex one-on-one, mm -hmm. -on -one, you know? And now, where the internet is involved, yes. and a lot of non-physical, um, mm -hmm. um, how should I put it? Physical um, um, bonding. Because you more long time you used to have physical bonding yes. with children. Yes, yeah. They would play in the yard, they would do this, yes. they would do that. The, the bonding now for children is personal mm -hmm. and the internet. How much likes I could get? Yes. How much personal comments I could get? And the internet. Yeah. It always. You, and it, and it made, it, 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 it made a, a whole new opening because now you could have, long time, you could have t um, tell how much friends, real friends your children Oh, have. yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You knew your children friends. Yes. Yeah. Now the friends is friends that you don't know. You don't know. You have no clue. You don't even know if it's a real person. You don't even know if it's a real person. <laughs> yes. yes, very true. They make friends mm -hmm. via mm -hmm. the internet. Yeah. The friends before they invite them home or they'll have ice cream and this you'll and that. See them. You'll yes. see them as physical. Yes, yes. Right? The friends now are imaginary. Yes. They don't know who is standing so behind very these true. Oh, So very true. And that true. is what makes it difficult for a parent. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, in terms of cyberbullying, is there any legality state? Can you, can, well, is there anything yes, that there you is. can do? Allow me to refer to my notes concerning this because yes. in the legal aspect, I don't want to speak out of term. There are legal consequences, including charges to adults under the harassment by electronic means according to the Offenses Against the Person Act, Chapter 11.08, Section 30 or social intervention for children under 18 years old. Right. There is also, it should be noted that children under the age of 7 are not criminally responsible. Right. Yeah, according to the law. And I know some people be like, no, we have some real bright ones. No. But according <laughs> no, no, to no, their... No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, yeah, who would say that? that from <laughs> seven under, you have some real bright... <laughs> Come on. Not because they can repeat everything that they have on their tablet. <laughs> so very they, true. No, no, no. So and then a lot of the children, know. you would find them speaking proper English. This is one of the things I... I, I, I that is one of the few things mm -hmm. I think the tablet has mm -hmm. done for our children. Mm -hmm. One of the very few advantages yeah. is that they learn fast yes. and they speak properly. Yes, very proper. Very proper, <laughs> because they speak what they hear. Yes, they mimic speech. They mimic yeah. speech, you know. Mm -hmm. So from, let's say, you rem remember, a lot of children is stuck in front of this tablet for, for mommy and daddy to get things done home mm -hmm. from the age of, let's say, Three, three years, two years, right, yes. two years going up the road. Yeah. So from mm -hmm. three to five to seven or whatever, that time there is a learning process yes. for the child and they're gravitating what they hear. So true. And you time know? to any preschool, you will hear every child with a foreign accent. Yes, they are speaking <laughs> properly. It's, so it's a plus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a plus in that way. But then the, the, the floodgate to danger is really... It's, yeah, it's wider. It's there. Mm -hmm. You know, I know you spoke on 
the uh, mental health of cyberbullying. Yes. You know that impact it would have. Yes. Right. But could you elaborate a little more on that because we could not be seeing the the signs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. And asking our children, what happened? What, what What's going on with you? Mm -hmm. Why are you not learning your work? Yeah. Why are you so distant? Yeah. Not not seeing what is happening and thinking as the old school way. Yeah. Well, it have to be something that she eat or, you know? Because oh, we, like, our mental yes. is not that far forward. Because mm. you remember, we grew in a different time. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't even believe that she's or he's being cyber yes, bullied. Yes. We don't even mm -hmm. have that on in our mind. The, and this is the importance of communication. Now communication is not just verbally. Right. right? You're a parent, learn your child, how your child walk, how they communicate, how they sit, how they move when they're happy, when they're sad, when they're sick. Right? So mm -hmm. when we are communicating with our children and they, their words may say I'm okay. Right. But their body language says something different. You know, to one time to pick up on that. Right. You check on that. The mental health. Children are suicidal. Children now suffer with high records of anxiety, of depression. When children post pictures online and, oh, you look fat. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Yeah. All of a sudden, your child don't want to eat. Yeah. You're cooking the best meal they don't yeah. want to the eat. The things that they used to enjoy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, the child is bubbly and sprightly. Someone posts a, a little, maybe a video or something that they're reading or, or they're dancing. And you, or you're looking like a blob or some kind yeah. of ridiculous I comment. I understand And they absorb that. That. Yeah. these comments and they embody it. And we see our nice daughters and our nice sons being very withdrawn. All of a sudden we see the boys them want to kill Jim because now they mean they have to get muscles yeah. to look a certain, certain way, way to be yeah. accepted. Yep. You know, or they start to smoke or they start to drink or they start to they always want to fight because yeah, now some of yeah, so much. We have the girls them, they they cut in. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. They're cutting. Mm -hmm. And they're so creative, you wouldn't even know they're cutting. They're cut yeah. <laughs> they are yeah. so creative. Yeah, you're they in, you're hide in. it. Mm -hmm. So we have to we have to know the child that we are responsible for. And that doesn't mean in my generation, when I grew up, right. everybody in my street knew me. Yeah. So if I walk from home to out the road and a neighbor find I wasn't as bubbly. My father would come home in the evening from work. You okay? Yeah, the neighbor I see a pass and it is morning. It is yeah, when a community yes. child, yes. But now we have a lot of fences and walls and yes. I know it's for yeah. safety, but it's, everybody it's, it's can't for safety, be for but themselves. Then again, it's not for safety. That's I right. will never side with that. That, that analogy of let me grow my child yeah. land. Mm -hmm. I think that is where we went really wrong. I agree with you 100%. You know, the, we need the community to yeah. grow the child even more now. No more than ever. No more than ever because now the economic strain that mm -hmm. we have now, we would have, we'd be homeless. We would be. Right? Because we have to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And the neighbor, while we are out, that's it and the neighbor may be home. Mm -hmm. And if we work together, when I'm home, I'm looking out for the yes. neighbor. And when the neighbor yes. is home, she's looking out for me or yes. he's looking out for me. Then the community now, the children in the community would know, if I do foolishness, by the time mommy come home, Let you know what's going to happen. Let me tell you, the kind of hide and stunts right. you have to do exactly. for the neighbor I'm not to see Because her. if your mom told you, don't leave the yard. And I leave the yard. And you leave the yard. And the neighbor say, I had instances like that. Come and on. I would lie and say, I'm going for ice. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Because I leave the yard. And then no mommy no. said, don't, don't leave, leave the yard. yard. But now it's everybody walking. Yeah, the, the neighbor could see you leave the yard. Your child leave the yard a hundred times. Mm -hmm. They don't. It doesn't it, matter to no, them. It, 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 that's not their business. Anymore. Yeah. You and know? that's so sad. And that is so sad. The day that we come together again as, as a family in a, in a community and start to grow the children again, because as I said, the economic strain is not like long time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The economic strain is 10 times worse. Mm -hmm. So we have to now 
start back to look out for our neighbors' yes. children. Yes, we have to. You know, and if we don't do that, then we are going down a slippery slope. We are going down a slippery you know? slope, and I tell parents we need to be very guarded with how we speak around our, our children. children yes, don't yes. let them. You, you I don't care how vexed you are with the neighbor. You, but but and that's the thing. <laughs> Long ago, you could not mm. even stand there when your mother is having a conversation. That is the highest form of disrespect. disrespect. <laughs> yeah. And if you, your mother is speaking ill about the neighbor, and you play mad and pass the neighbor straight. Craziness. Craziness. <laughs> you are you gonna get one of the hardest times. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, so little things like that That's is where right. it has to come back. You know, we want to grow our children more than. Uh, being more friends to our children yeah. than being parents. There's a line. There is a line. There's a line. We have to be we have to be parents and we have to be friends. Yeah. But they have to understand that they we have, have to parents. understand. The first rule is parents. Yeah, parent. Yeah, like I, I, I told my daughter, I say, um, sometimes you won't like me and that's okay. And that's okay. That's quite <laughs> Yeah, that's quite with uh, me with, <laughs> my, with me as well. Yeah. You wouldn't like me all the time. No, no. And I, I understand and that. I am very comfortable with that. Yes, but you will understand what my rules, you will understand where I'm coming That's from. That's right. And, and sometimes when I say no, yeah. don't even question Don't, that. don't. You know? We, we see children living in now. Yes. And because we have been there, done that, and now we, everyone is exposed to more. And, 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 and one final thing before we wrap up, I personally believe that parents have to upgrade. I believe so as well. Take the old school method and upgrade yourself upgrade because yourself. you are going to lose your children fast. We have too much the internet is teaching already. them ten times faster than you. Yeah. When I was small and I see my and, and I see a little brother or sister come home, is the plane bring that baby? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that they sold us that for yeah, years. Yeah, for years, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Baby does come on plane. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You could ask a three-year-old child now from the time that child started, where baby does come from in Maui Valley. Yeah. Yeah. They could tell you. Mm -hmm. You can't even fool them when baby does come on plane. You cannot fool them. So we have to upgrade and understand where we're going with children. That's true. I know we have to wrap up. Yes. So tell me anything that you want to tell Trinidad and Tobago about um, cyber, um, crime, anything you want to say about the whole, I, I cannot see what you're telling me now. <laughs> All right, yes. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. So anything you want to... Um, you wanna you wanna speak about the symposium that's coming up? Yes. You know? Anything? You um, go right ahead. Let me refer again. Yes. As you all know, as we mentioned, we have the ICT panel discussion on cyberbullying, which is the 16th of April. Mm -hmm. We also have our community caravan. It's the launch of our community caravan. It's been since December last year, Child Affairs Division, we have been out on the streets throughout Trinidad and Tobago shortly, where we are doing pop-ups, so we are spreading information awareness on child protection, child rights, letting the community and the nation know that this is something right. called child rights, child protection. And we just want people to know when you all see us, accept us, respond yeah. to us. We are just here to get your feedback. We have a lot of different things coming up within the division as well. How soon can, because we have a lot of listeners oh, yeah. from Tobago. Yeah. Is there any card date for Tobago? to do anything um, to enlighten the public out there in Tobago yes. to give them mm -hmm. knowledge. Any any set date or any set place for Tobago? Well, we are, for Tobago, we are coming this month right. in Tobago and in May. And one of the areas that we, all, other than the street, we'll be going out on the streets right. in Tobago. We are planning to also have different sit-down discussions. One of the areas we targeted is Shore Park. We uh -huh. are just wrapping up and finalizing location, and date, time, time, and all of that. Uh -huh. But we have a lot of plans for Tobago Mental Health Cool Down, where we target the children, mm -hmm. those that wrote SCA. And uh, nice, yeah, nice. yeah, letting them know and Tobago, letting them know that we know it was stressful. Yes. But this is what we have for you. 
We have also a, a big I Am A Child concert that we plan to have National Children's Day right. in November. We have quite a few so, things. Few things. Yeah. I would love to, for you to come back between now and November. Oh, Let's sit November. and have a conversation about this big concert. Yeah. I am a child. Yes, I know? am a child. Because children need to understand that they are children. Yes. You know, I am not forcing myself to be an adult. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot we can speak about. Yeah. When it comes oh, to yeah. That. All yeah. right, so I would invite you back. <laughs> you Thank the invitation you. is open. Just Great. get on to Michelle. Yes, we right? will. And between now and more November, mm -hmm. come back and let's sit and have a discussion. Definitely. All right. Definitely. I want to say thank you so, so, so much. This was thank so interesting. Thank you for having you know? us. And I wish you all the best as thank you go you. forward. Thank you. All right? Yes. Thanks so much again. <laughs>